Okay, it's a new month. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? It is Monday, March 8th. Oh my goodness, March 8th of 2021. Wasn't it just Christmas like two days ago or something like that? But the snow's gone, so that's good, right? So it's time to sew another My Favorite Colors Mona Block or two. If you're not caught up, please don't get upset, okay? Because that's the beauty and the magic of the internet. You can go to YouTube anytime you want, one o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, and you can watch and rewatch and rewatch and get caught up anytime you want. So uh, don't be discouraged if you're not up, caught up with us, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to my cutting table and uh, show you how we're gonna get started with blocks three, no, four and five. Remember three and four, two and three, sorry, two and three. And now we're gonna do four and five. Exciting, yay? Okay, it's back to the same way that we did block number one, only it's not as big, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out, again, I've got my two, pieces and I've gone to my book here and it says I need four of fabric two and five, four of fabric three and five, and eight of fabric seven and five. So five seems to be my common uh, block. So that's the line I'm going to draw on the fabric five. So I've just got the stack of fabric five here <clears throat> on top and I'm just putting it corner to corner and just with my mechanical pencil now because this is going to be cut off. Uh, I wouldn't use a ballpoint pen but you could use a chalk pencil. You know how I feel about chalk if you've watched any of the other videos. I find chalk is just a really nice substitute. A sliver of soap is a good marking instrument. I don't care for those that uh, disappear uh, and uh, it's just that easy. I've got fabric eight, no, fabric seven and fabric five right there. Now I've already done all these others because I didn't want you to have to sit and watch me because we've already done this before. But let's go over to the sewing machine. How are you today, Peter? Fabulous. Welcome to my sewing room, our sewing room, I guess it is. You're in here just as much as I am, if not more. Now remember, oh, something I got. I'll have to show it to you. What do you got? I got my single hole plate came in. Oh, oh, yeah, I, I remember wanted... that day. Yeah. You came running down the hallway uh -huh. and I was in the yarn department. And uh -huh. you're like, I got my single hole plate. Yes. Now let me get my old one out so that you can kind of see the difference because. And I think, and I think you were like our, um, you were asking about it each time you worked. Is my single hole plate coming? Yeah, has my has my uh, single hole plate coming yet, please? Okay, so this is what my old one looked like. So can you see uh -huh. right here? There's a big wide opening, just enough for my fabric to go right down in there. And so now what I have is right here is my single hole plate. I'm gonna just gently roll my needle down so you can see it just goes right in the middle of that single hole. See that? And it doesn't take the fabric down with it. Now it doesn't mean I'm gonna start stop using my uh, leaders and enders because that's just a habit and I like to do it. Because uh, I get lots of quilts made that way. I did I, a test at home with that. And how did it work out? So for you? I was using, I was like, well, I, I should start using the enders and the leaders. Uh -huh. And I did. And then one time I did it. And when I flipped over my half square triangle, I had where the thread, on the back. extra thread that Boobers I don't get back. when I use my leaders and enders. Right. So because when I went to the... turn it, it didn't press very well. It didn't make a nice right. seam. And what happens is, is that leader and ender holds the tension of the thread, the top thread and the bobbin thread, and it holds it on that piece of fabric so that it's not willy-nilly moving around when you start sewing on your piece. 
so let's get started here. We're going to put down our uh, leader and ender for today. So on that first, now I marked my center line, but what I really want to do is I want to sew a quarter inch on one side and a quarter inch on the other. And remember it said I needed eight of these. Well, I'm only going to sew four because each time I sew a, um, a set, I get two. So I only really need to make four sets of these. So I'm going to lay that right on my quarter inch foot. Can you see where, uh, let me get my, hey, I got a stiletto today. Look oh, at how look at nice that, that is. That's it's, fancy. It's by Annie.com, and what's super nice about it is it also has a finger press on it. Oh, now, cool. I'll show you what a finger press is after a bit, but uh, this is it. Now, remember last is that, week. Is that one something that we carry or that we can yeah. order for Yeah. Oh, customers? we've got tons of these in stock. Okay. So, yeah, come and get you one of these. These are super nice, and they're, uh, like, burnished so that they really grab and hold on to the fabric. Now, this is my brass one that I have ab I've had for 40, 40 years, probably. And it's just, you know, has always been in my sewing box, and uh, I really like it. Um, there is a Taylor's All, A-W-L, that's a very similar product to this, but it's much fatter. It comes to a sharp point, but it gets really fat because... Uh, the tailors, they would work with all kinds of real bulky fabric, like leather and stuff. And if they wanted to punch a hole through something, they would use their awl instead of their stiletto because the stiletto just wasn't strong enough or wide enough, thick enough, okay? So this is my uh, brass stiletto that I use. But I'm going to try this new one today because uh, I looked um, at the ones that we had in stock and this is the one that we have, and I have not tried this before, but I love the idea that it has that little finger press, and it has a little flat area right there for your thumb. And so it doesn't roll around. See, like, it doesn't roll like off. Like my seam ripper. Well, or, no, my seam ripper doesn't roll around either. Remember I Mine said does. that's why I like this seam I ripper. I have a round one. Yeah, well. I'm chasing across the sewing room all day. You need to put that in your Easter basket. And But this one, see, it will roll around, but it's got kind of a beveled edge right there at the top. But it has rolled off my table before. But I'm going to see about this one. So anyway, I've started that right up there. Hold that in place. I'm going to let the sewing machine do the work. If it's going too fast, remember, you always have the option, if your machine has this, to slow it down. If you feel like you're panicky and you're out of control, just go ahead and slow it down a little bit. Now, I know why I'm not feeling comfortable. I'm not feeling comfortable, Peter. Can you guess why? Well, you got a nice sewing chair. I do. Have your shoes are on. Why My you your shoes? shoes are on. I've got to get these shoes off. I kept sitting here thinking, I feel so imprisoned. I don't know what that is. What's going on? Well, I forgot to take my shoes off. Okay. Now, let's pick up the next one. You're just so excited to sew. I know I was. That's true. And then this is called, again, chain piecing, where you just put one piece in right after the other, and they follow along with one another. And you would do all of them, all the pairs like that. Where'd all my uh, starters and enders go? Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I started and ended at the same with the same one. That's pretty funny. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna cut that and then we'll twist them and go down the other side. So I'm actually sewing a quarter of an inch away from that line. Again, I'm just guiding that fabric, letting the sewing machine do its business, do its work. Now, if I had a blue million of these to do, half square triangles, 
I would not mark every one of them. And I'm gonna show you when we get to another block that has smaller half square triangles, I'm gonna show you a nifty neato trick. I showed it to Peter last week and he went right home so happy. I think he skipped all the way home because he was so happy to try that out. And, and I approve I approve that technique. Yeah. He was, I love it. He was having fun with that technique. So I'm gonna share that with you in a week or two whenever we get to that next that block that has all those uh bear paws on the corner. So now you can see that I've sewn on each side. Now it's time to come and square up. Remember what squaring is? I don't know why they call it square up because you're not really squaring up. You're just making it square. You know what I'm saying? You're just making sure that it's square. Well, you know what else people square up? What? Their horses. I don't, I don't know anything about that, Peter. What's that about? Well, when people show horses <laughs> at the... At the sh at the horse shows, they square their horses up where their two front feet and their their two back feet are square crossed. Really? Yep. And that's called square up, yep. even though they're not going up or doing anything that's up. Yes. They're calling that square up. Square up your pony. Square up your pony. Yeah. Have you got your uh, cowboy boots on today, Peter? Of course. Why don't you show them to the people? Aren't those snazzy? They're, bro they're comfortable and broken in. Is that right? That's what I like about them. Yep. How long does it take to break in a pair of cowboy boots? About a week and a half to two weeks. My if boyfriend, you have them on every day. My boyfriend wore cowboy boots to prom with his tux. Nice. Yeah. He grew up to be a veterinarian. You're just zipping right through those. I am. Just cutting right on that line. Nobody's business, you know? And now, you know, I'm going to get my favorite so ruler out. So now what out. happens? Now I'm going to get my favorite ruler out. Is no. it time to quilt in the day? It's not time to quilt in the day, but it's time to use our half square triangle uh, square up ruler by quilt in the day. And we're going to look on our book here. I'm not going to show you, but we're going to look on our book and see what size these are supposed to be. And we're not going to press them open beforehand. That's the beauty of this ruler, okay? The beauty of the ruler. Let me, let me sneak a peek. Sneak a peek. Okay. Measure twice, cut once. Right. So these are going to be a whole increment. So I'm just going to lay that measurement that I want them to be right on the line. And can you see, Peter, if you can get over here a little bit better? Yeah, I can see a thread. Uh, can you see that there's fabric out there? Uh -huh. These have been oversized just a hair so that I can really square those up and make those exactly the size I need those to be. Now, I want you to go, while I'm doing this, okay? I'm just gonna keep doing it. But while I'm doing this, I want you to go get a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. Cause I'm gonna give you some information that you're gonna wanna write down. It's going to be information that you'll come back to time and time again. So I'll write it down for Peter because he doesn't have a free hand. But I'll make sure that he gets, he, he knows and he gets it written down. Because this will be a, a tip that you'll come back to any time that you need to make half square triangles on a pattern and they don't give you the size of square you need. I'm gonna tell you how to figure what size square you need to start out with to get two half square triangles the size you need, okay? So that'll be exciting. So go run and get your pencil and paper and pen, whatever you've got to write with. Is this your book, can I write in it? Yep. Okay, so you're gonna take the finished Can they read upside down? <laughs> oh, that's funny. This is half square triangles. And it's gonna be H-S-T for short, okay? F take the finish, here, let me write the word take. Take the finished size of the half 
square triangle. So let's say you want it to finish two inches, okay? You want it to finish at two inches. Cut two inch finished. That means after it's all sewn in on all four sides. So if you have a quilt block and it is half square triangles like this, So this is a half square triangle, this is a half square triangle, this is a half square triangle, and this is a half square triangle. Now these will not measure two inches yet because we haven't sewn anything on this side and we haven't sewn anything on that side. Yes, we've sewn here and we've sewn here, but still we have a seam allowance here and a seam allowance here. So let's put another square here and another square there, like that, okay? And then let's bring another square down here, and let's just make this one a full square. So there we go. So this half square triangle right here, this one is the only one in this whole group that has been sewn in, and that is called finished. So whatever size that is right there, that one would be the finished size. So we're going with two inch finished, okay? Two inches. There we go, two inch finished. Now cut a pair of three inch blocks or squares. This should say squares. Three inch squares, cut. Cut a pair of three inch squares. This is my three inch square. Draw a line and then sew a quarter inch on each side. And then when you cut this apart, you'll cut right here on this line, you'll cut that apart. This one, you'll have just a hair over two, in, uh, two and a half inch. You will size these or square up, square up to two and a half inches. Well, that makes no sense. You want two inches. Well, but it does make sense because when you cut this and you size it to two and a half and you open it up, that gives you a quarter of an inch on each side that you can then so all the way around a quarter of an inch and then that takes up a quarter inch, that takes up a quarter inch, that takes up a quarter inch. So if this is a quarter inch and that's a quarter inch, that's two inches now because you've taken off a half an inch. And same thing here and here. So then you would end up with a two inch finished half square triangle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, hopefully that you can get a screenshot of that. Peter will hold it onto the screen there. And you can get a screenshot of that so that you can have that to copy that down. So if you'll cut it one inch bigger, always, always cut your squares one inch bigger than the finished. And I'm gonna underline that because that's so important, finished size. And I'll let you uh, have a screenshot of that too, Peter. 
My handwriting is not the best, but you know what? I think it's legible. So, okay. So that is my tip. Today's uh, big number one tip is whenever you got a pattern and it doesn't tell you how to make the half square triangles and you haven't a clue to what size to make those squares, usually you can figure out what size the squares are, the finished size, because if it's a four inch square and it has four half square triangles and it finishes at four inches, you're gonna bet your bottom dollar that those are two inch finished half square triangles, you see? Is that an Annie song? That's not an Annie song. Uh, you mean like Little Orphan Annie? Mm hmm In the movie no. Annie? No. Oh, Bet Your Bottom Dollar? Yeah. Is that from Little Annie? I don't know. I've always said that. Bet Your Bottom Dollar. When he sings? Isn't that something that he sings? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to look it up later. Okay. You'll let us know. Will you let us know? Maybe. They can't, Maybe. They, Maybe. They can't hear your head shaking, Peter. Maybe. Maybe. If I find it. They can look it up themselves and find out faster than you can. I know. I'm, because I'll you're be still filming. at work. I'll be filming. I'm filming. Today's his day for filming. After we get done here, we might have to do a what's new. I don't know if we'll have time or not. But anyway, you know, some people think this is quite monotonous. I quite enjoy it. I turn my music on. I've always got music playing. How about you, Peter? Do you have music or the TV or music. anything? Yeah, music. Yeah, I always have music. Now, do you have to put your earbuds in because your wife doesn't want to hear it? Uh -uh. Or is she enjoying it too? No, she's blasting the TV in the other room. Oh, now. okay. So I'm blasting the radio oh, in the okay. cell phone room. Okay, okay. Well, so the electric company loves you guys. Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Now today, I did not forget my clapper. I brought my clapper so I'm a, ha I'm a happy camper with my clapper. <laughs> I'm a happy clamper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, I went right home and yeah, there it was, right on my ironing board. So, uh, I just love doing this. It's so therapeutic, you know, playing with my threads, playing with yep. my fabric. Moving them from the right stack and putting them in the Putting them stack. in the other stack, getting them ready to be pressed open. How's that pressing open going for you? I hope everybody is enjoying it that's trying it. If you don't try it, it won't hurt my feelings. I'm not going to come to your house and see if your seams are pressed open or anything. Heck, I don't even know where half of you live. I do know where some of you live because you're in our Facebook group and you're in our POS system here at the shop. And uh, so, yeah, I know where. But I'm not going to come and see if your seams are perfect. Or... Yeah, we don't do house visits. We do not. We do not. We do not call the uh, quilting police on anyone. One time I did call... Uh, the Humane Society, my friend, she had a Hello Kitty sew machine, and she hadn't cleaned it for like two years. <laughs> so I got on the phone to the Humane Society, which was really my uh, sewing machine repair guy, because he was coming in that day, and I told him, I said, bring your badge and your gun, because he was a policeman, too. <laughs> and so he did. He wrote her up a summons, too, buddy, for not cleaning her sewing machine. Hello Kitty sew machine. That's an old Janome little beginner sew machine. I just bought mine because it was so darn cute. It just sits up on a shelf. I don't really use it to sew with. But you can. I mean, it's a, it's a sew machine. So there we go. All done. Lickety split. Now, I want to tell you that number four and number five are done exactly the same way. Okay? Just different colors. You're just going to put the colors together differently. See, it's all green, where this one's mostly all red and a little bit of that turquoise. This one's all going to be green, so it's going to be the mate. So let's come over here and let's get to pressing. Let's get to... Oh, wrong way. Uh-oh, wrong way. 
Yep, the ironing board's over here, Peter. Okay. Gonna open up that seam. Open right up all the open sesame. Seams. Well now my fingers aren't working today. There we go. Okay. Oh, the iron went dead on me. Come on, Mr. Iron. See sleep. this bonky, blinking, blinking yeah, light? It sleep. Nobody was yeah, it, it goes to sleep. It got sad because nobody you know, was using it. Exactly. I, I don't know of any machines, I mean, any irons today that don't have that safety guard on them where they, um, after nobody's used them the for a while, they go to sleep. The cheaper they are, the less sleep. safer they are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got me one of those ten dollar irons. It oh never, yeah, it never turns off. Oh my goodness. Okay, well you don't want that. Okay, you you know the reason for the clapper, right? Well, so it, it's so you can quilt on a windy day and it keeps everything in place. Hey, you can quilt outside on a windy day. I didn't think of that. I don't usually quilt outside, but that is good. That's Set good to think about. Yeah. yeah. I gotta think about these things. The weather's getting nice. Yeah, I don't Birds really. Birds are chirping. I have a front porch, but Purposes I don't have a are deck. Growing. I guess you could maybe call it a deck, but it's in the front of the house. What happened there? I started sewing on the wrong line. So I started sewing on the drawn line instead of quarter inch over. So just had I to was seeing back. some beautiful blocks in our private Facebook oh, group. Did yes. you see that one last night that that lady finished? Yes, yes. That was so pretty. If you bought your kit here from Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, then definitely come and ask to join our Always in Stitches My Favorite Color is Moda Facebook group. We're doing some fun things on there. We're getting ready. Uh, after uh, block five, no, after block six, I think. After block six, there's going to be a big surprise on the Facebook page. So you, you definitely want to uh, see about joining. You can only join if you bought your kit from us. And the reason that is, is because it's geared towards people who can get here. You know, it's, uh, we're going to have uh, a big show and tell at the end where people can come. Now, if you want to come from California or wherever you're at, I suppose that'd be okay. But we're going to do things that are going to be uh, involving coming into the shop. So we thought we would just have it for the people who bought their kit. And just do something a little special for the people who bought their kit from us. Show them a little love. A little appreciation, yeah. Because I think it's important to uh, reward your customers that, uh, that definitely support their brick and mortar. Everything's online now, you know. We're even online. You can buy stuff from us online. We have a nice website. Our website is always in stitches one. Dot com. Peter's got a board over there that he can show you. And our phone number's over there. We always have it so that you can click that uh, little arrow and find our information underneath that uh, arrow. That what about people that just don't like fumbling around trying to order something on the computer? Is it what? You could call us. Jennifer's wonderful. That Jennifer, she's something else. She knows this store inside and out. You call and say, do you have any golf fabric? Well, yeah, here, let me go take a picture of it and send it to you. She'll, she'll get it for you. One night, I was at a retreat, and I had forgot to buy fabric for my border, and I did, well, the reason I didn't is because I didn't think I'd get it done at the retreat. I didn't think I'd get that far. So I didn't bring any border fabric with me. Well, my girlfriend was coming here for a class that night and then she was going to come to the retreat the next day so i called jennifer i says jennifer i need a, i i am desperate i need a, a border fabric 
uh, for this quilt I'm making. I took a picture of the quilt, sent her the picture, and I said, I want something black and white. It's gotta be black and white, not really big scale, uh, but not real tiny scale either. So she went to the black and white area and she was taking pictures of everything and sending them to me, how about this, how about this, how about this? And I settled on one, I gave her my credit card number, she ran uh, the credit card number, and my girlfriend brought me the fabric, and I was able to finish that whole quilt at that weekend retreat. So that was kind of fun. I enjoyed that very much. It just pays to know people in the right places. I'm just telling ya. So look at this color combination, Peter. This apricot -y orange and this minty green. Now those aren't really colors on the color wheel, but you know we like to refer to the colors as something fun. And so that's that's just a really nice color combination, don't you think? It really gives a great contrast. It does. Now remember nice in pop. yeah, nice yeah, nice pop. Keeps it interesting and awake. Right. Keeps the fabric from falling asleep. Hmm. So with my big voice, no, they don't fall asleep very easy. No. Look how pretty that is. No, they can't. Look at how pretty that is together. See? Well, that's a nice I, block. I love these. Uh, now, that looks familiar to me. Yeah, that was our I bet test you that's block. that's exactly... Three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. Yep. Three and a half. That was our testing block for when we tested our quarter inch. If yours didn't come out three and a half, you need to figure out why. What are the three most important things to cut to have an accurate block? Do you remember, Peter? A gorgeous pen cushion. Oh, quit it. You need to be accurate in your cutting, accurate in your quarter inch, and accurate in your pressing. Okay, so one, two, three, so all those blocks are done. Now it's time to lay them out. Now, we're gonna I'm gonna go over here, Peter. I don't know okay. where you're going. I'll get there one way or another. Okay. Now we're going to lay it out. So, it says right here in my book, look, I covered up all the uh, stuff that I don't want them to know about without them buying the book. So now we can show my book, okay? okay. I'm going to start doing that from now on. because I, Yeah. Okay, so to lay my block out, here's a little diagram of what it's supposed to look like. But then here's the little diagram of what it shows how to put it together. And then, I didn't know if you guys noticed this or not, but up here on this tagline up here, it tells you what size the blocks are, and then it also tells you the finished size. Now, that's finished size. So, before you sew it into your quilt, it's going to be a half an inch bigger than it says right there. So, this is fabric 7 and 5. So, it looks like that. Now, on the one that's hanging up, it's a light colored background. Let me show you. I've just come over here for a minute. See how it's a light colored background? But on mine, it's this orange. Okay? So I'm going to lay that down. Oh, I forgot to check the Moda website today. Why? What's on the Moda website that we should know about? Well, to see, because last time they had different colorway options for blocks. Oh, yeah. Well, they're not up with us yet. For blocks two and three. They're only on block two and three. They, oh. won't, they won't do it again for another month. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're moving a little faster clip. Right, right. We're filming every Monday instead of once a month. Because, you know, our people want to get on with it. You know, they've got other quilts to they make. They got, yeah, yeah. Places so, to go, people yeah. to see. So, anyway, can you see how I've just replaced that block with that one? Now, can you see that this block, if I lay it right there, and here's the seam, it's a half an inch You're bigger. You're gonna have to cut that smaller. No, no, no. No? It's gonna sew in smaller, cause oh. I'm gonna take a quarter of an inch all the way around it off. And then it'll be exactly the finished size. So today, if you don't learn anything else, you've got to know the difference when you're reading a pattern between finished size and unfinished size and what that means in a pattern, okay? I won't be there to hold your hand for every pattern. So those words mean something when they're written out. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they certainly do. They have significant consequences. Yeah. When, it, when it says, read all the directions before you start, you know, that's, that's kind of what it means. It means read them and understand them. 
<laughs> and look at the and look at the pictures too. Oh, I love pictures. The pictures are important. Yeah, pictures are important. So anyway, I'm gonna lay this out. I'm gonna lay it out so that you know my because I know this orange is the same as that white. I'm gonna lay that out just like it goes there on that. And I'm gonna do it in these four segments, in these segments right here. I so, wonder if anybody's ever played Tetris and saw that, you know what, that'd make an interesting quilt block. You think, maybe? I wonder. Okay, this goes like that. So that's sort of a flying geese unit, you know? Sort of a flying geese unit. One's flying forward and one's half of it's flying backwards. Uh-huh. And then this other one is uh, fabric three and five. So is this three? Or is this three? How do I know? Well, I have my handy dandy schmandy little cheat sheet here. So fabric three and five, there's three, there's five. So I know it is this one. So fabric three goes like that. And another one goes like that. And now we have a block that we've not made before. See how this is not really a flying geese? Because if it were a flying geese, the angle would go that way. This is more of like a star blade. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got to keep that in mind that we've not done that one before. Star blade. Uh huh. Now we want to go with fabric two and five. So this is two. Look how that makes a flying geese unit right, right there. That's pretty cool. And then another one, which is going to go like that and make another what? Star blade. See that? Makes that other star. So now we've got two points to a star. And then we're going to take another one of these. And we're going to go there like that. And then uh, we're going to go over here to this one. And we've got this one goes like that. So there's another flying geese unit. And go back to fabric three and five, and it goes like that, and like that. We've got another flying geese unit here, and they're all coming in. See that? So it's so important that the way you lay them out is the correct way. It goes like that. And then the next two are just going to be another one of those blade units. So this star is going to have four points. It's going to have this uh, kind of dark mint green and the light mint green, dark mint green and light mint green. So, see that? Isn't that pretty? And what I do sometimes is I squint my eyes and that kind of makes the pattern really stand out. Or a great tip is Take a picture of it with your phone and then look at it and you'll immediately see if there's a, a piece sticking out that doesn't belong where it, where you've got it. I've done that where I've posted a picture of my block to Instagram uh -huh. and then you I realized mm. I found it. You found the mistake. Found the mistake. Another thing I like to have in my sewing room is post-it notes. I find things to do okay, with post-it notes. Hold on, I gotta I got take a picture. Okay, you're going to take a picture? Yeah, i got to take a picture. i got to get a good picture. Okay. You know, i got to get one for the Instagram. Okay. This is hard. One-handed? Yeah. Okay, I got my picture. Okay. Alrighty, so now we're going to sew these together in units of four, just like we did our other block. Everything so, looks like it's going in the right direction does in the it? picture. Okay, excellent. So what I'm going to do is, of course, I've got my board, and I know where my top is. It's right there. See? It says top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this one over and this one over. This one. 
and this one, and then I'm going to go to the next row and fold over, fold over, fold over, fold over. I'll bring these and stack them up. I haven't twisted them around or anything. And I know... Pile them high and let them fly. I know that this right here is where all my seams are going to go. So I'm going to sew one because I want you to see how I pin. I've got this where the two seams have to come together. And remember, I just walk that up and make sure every time that it's together. I take one of my pins. Make sure that's together. I'm gonna make sure it's together down there too. You know what, it wouldn't hurt to pin that together down here just so I know that doesn't slip and slide around, okay? All right, now I'm ready to sew. Take my pin out. Oh, that single hole plate, Peter, makes such a difference. Is it like butter? Uh, well, it just doesn't go down in there. I don't have to worry about it, you know? I don't have to have that lingering over me. If they have a Janome sewing machine, um, are we able to order those? We are. If you don't have one for your machine, definitely we can order uh, a single whole plate for you. Um, yeah, no problem. I like that. It's swimming around. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a spin table. Yeah. You know what I might would do next week? You know that... A uh, rubbery, well, I could put battery, battery, Walmart. batting, but you know those uh, rubbery uh, yes. drawer liners yes. and they're rubbery? Yep. I think I'll bring one of those and maybe this that'll help. This wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I think that would help. Okay, now again, see I've got that lined up. It's really good lined up right there, but I'm going to go down here and I put a pin here so I can remember where my sewing line is. But I'm going to pin that one down there. It really doesn't do anything but just help stabilize this and keep it in line. Uh oh, am I supposed to be sewing this way? Hmm. I better open that back up because I've twisted this around and we've been talking and I don't know what I'm doing here. We got excited about the. We did. Single we got excited. I think it goes like this, but I'm not real sure. We'll, we'll find out when we go to put the, the whole thing together. Yeah, we will, won't we? It's um, that one. Oh no, it'd be like this, I think. It's this one right here. So yes, it is. It's like this. This is my sewing right here. So. Now, Lenine our boss, she says that I can order new wool today. So oh. if you love wool applique, we are going to get some new wool in. And I am excited. I love wool. Yeah. It's going to be on the bolt. We will, oh. we will cut some of it down, you know, oh. into bundles. Yeah. But wool if you want the bolt. wool on the bolt. And she didn't give me a limit. Oh, so I can just, blank, I mean, I can just... Blank checkbook. Blank check. So I can just order till my heart's content. Okay. Now, we're going to take a break. And Peter's going to charge up the machine here while I sew the rest of these together. And then we'll come back, okay? I might even go through swatches of wool. Ooh, that would be fun. Okay, when I left, I had it all laid out, and I sewed pairs together, like this. Now I'm going to sew four patches. So I look at my seam, and I have one seam here, and I have one seam here that has a point. We call that a point right there, because we don't want to sew into that and cut off our point. 
we want to sew right to that point, right? So there should be a quarter of an inch between your uh, raw edge and your point there. We don't have to worry about that because our, our quarter inch foot, we know we uh, have done this test to learn we can make a good quarter inch. And so now we know that our foot will take care of that. But what we want to make sure is that that seam lines up really nice. And I'm going to put a pin on this side because that's the side that is going against my feed dogs and against my foot. And then I'm going to go to the left. And I'm going to make sure that that seam lines up with that. Put one in the middle. Just for good measure. Come over here and line this one up. <clears throat> Remember, you don't have to stick your pin way down in. It's easier to get a hold of if you don't. All right, now I'm ready to sew. I don't know why, but I always just kind of do an extra little press there. And I make sure this is all kind of lined up. Put that under there, take my pin out. A retreat let's say for instance and there were five people sharing the iron and I wanted to continue sewing without getting up and waiting at the ironing board what I could do is with my finger press here or wooden iron some people refer to them as a wooden iron. I could open that seam up. Now this is of course not going to give you as good as a seam as if you were pressing with the actual iron, but it opens up enough to help you get it pinned to the next one and the next one. So that's what you would use a finger press or a wooden iron, but I'm going to use my iron iron since I'm the only one here sewing and I'm the only one using the iron. It won't take long, Peter. Just a zoop, zoop, and three seconds on the clapper. One, two, three, and we're done. And now I've already sewn all these uh, four segments together, so now just put it down in place goes like that and look my thing doesn't slide anymore what how'd got, you fix it i got a little one of these did you mats. go to the market i went to the i didn't go to the market but i went into the uh closet of the magic the magic closet where everything is kept and you just stand in front right of there. it and you say i wish i had and you open your eyes and right there it is like it's, narnia it's like narnia exactly i wish i might i wish i may uh-huh so now I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna fold this over. Was you know, it the closet it behind matter. me? This is the closet it's, behind uh -huh. me. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna fold uh, I'm gonna fold this one over. This is gonna be my sewing right here. I'm gonna again start in the middle now. This time I'm gonna look at my seam. Do we get to use and a pen? I have two points. Do we get to use a pen? So now we get to use the yeah. pen. That's my favorite part. To okay, can they see me? Are they all focused? I'm, I'm putting my pin right at the tip of that point. And then I'm going to come over here, make sure my seam's open, and put it at the tip of that point, and that's going to match them up. I'm going to push my pin all the way through, okay? I'm going to come over here, because I always like to go to the left first. I don't know why. We decided that maybe it's because that's how we read from left to right. Put another one in the middle over here for good measure. 
come over to this side make sure now on this one I didn't have any seams to match up but this one I do I'm gonna pay extra little close attention to matching up those seams all the way up putting a pin in it put a pin in the middle so that doesn't fall back behind while I'm sewing then I'm going to come back to my middle and I'm going to make sure that that's anchored really good. I'm going to take this pin out and right here I'm going to pin right on that uh, seam allowance that's going to be going against my foot. If you didn't have those really thin glass head pins, uh -huh. do you have to worry about that shifting oh so slightly when you put a pin in it? You mean if Those my points. pins were real thick? Yeah. If my pins were thick? Yeah. I would think that it would shift the fabric somewhat. Any, I mean, even these thin ones shift the fabric a little bit. Fabric is really forgiving, though, you know? Uh, the slight variations, you can, you can pretty much get away with some of that. But I don't like thick pins just simply because they just don't go through the fabric as smooth. You know, you have to fight with them. And who wants to fight with your fabric and your squares? Not me. Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> Nobody wants to fight with their quilt blocks. Okay. So on my... Now, every once in a while, your um, leaders and enders need a haircut. Because this one's getting a little wild and crazy on me. And they can get caught. See, these little things can get caught in your uh, feed dogs. So go ahead and every once in a while, just give your leaders and enders a little trim. And we'll just throw that over here in the trash. You know what else gets hairy is my wool mat here that I iron on. And so I, do you know what are those things called, those lint rollers? Is that what they're called? Where you tear off a sheet and it's real sticky? Well, we have this new thing out there that um, will clean it. Oh, okay. But there's a new toy out there. Oh, okay. Next week I will be showing you that. It's I'll awesome. have to get it and learn how to use it. Well, you just take the wrapper off and run it across. Oh. You might have one in the magic closet. No, no, we don't have that because it just came in. Oh, it just came in. It's a new thing then. New. brand. It's the brand new. Well, I will uh, get one and I will use it and we'll just do a infomercial. Whether Well, on infomercials, you're really supposed to like everything you're selling. So, But I'll do a... What do you call it? Product review. review. A product review. That's what it'll do. Oh my goodness. That sounds so official, doesn't it? Well, it's especially official if if you're reviewing it. I just noticed that quilt block. Squirrel. Yeah, I put it right up there. Um, <laughs> I just noticed, well, if you do um, a review, it'll actually have some meaning and weight to it because of your quilting expertise. Well, and I don't fib. Nope. No, uh, no and, and my students that come to class and are with me in class know, they'll say, well, what do you think of this? And I'll say, well, you might want to rethink that if I, don't, if I don't think it's good. You know, I won't say, oh, that's terrible. I'll just say, you know, what if we look at it this way? So it's kind of like Project Runway. You might want to <laughs> rethink that there combination. There you go. <laughs> There you go. And then you're fired or you're out or however they do that on Project Runway. Offy dozy. Oh, off you, off you go. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to sew the two rows together. So see how I did this one block of four sewed to this block, this block of four to this block. Now I'm going to put them together. Remember last week we started in the middle and went around and around. We did. But this is I was getting dizzy that week. Was you? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of rounds. Okay, now, here we go with the points again. You love this, Peter. Uh-huh. Okay, so you put the right between the seam, right there, on the point, and you come over here and you do the same thing to this little guy over here. Oops, I put it down too far. Okay, right in, right at the point. Right at the point. You push that in to secure that down. Then we've got another one right here. Oh, we've not had multiples before, mm -hmm. have we? 
Oh, this is a thrill a minute, isn't it? A thrill a minute. So there you go. We're going to put those together. Anchor that in. I bet we might have another one over here. What do you think? A baby one. Yep, there we go. No, they're all the same size because oh. they're your quarter inch seam allowance. Don't confuse the people, Peter. Okay, now see. Then we go all the way back over here to the left or the right. It doesn't really matter. Every time you say to the left, I think of that song. To the left, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Is that the one? No, oh. no. The one about all your things that you own are in the box to the left. He's get, she's getting rid of her boyfriend. Oh, I she's don't know. Is that out. a country western song? No, it's a pop song. Oh, because that sounds more like a country song. Pop song. Okay, well, I don't know that song. Everything you own is in the box to the left. Oh, I don't know that song. Is it by the same person that loves the bass? No. Oh, no? Different person. Different person? Okay. I know about the person who loves the bass. Yeah, but I don't fun. know about she's this other. I don't know about this other person. I'm not too hip. You know, I'm like 62 years old, so I'm not that hip. Well, there's more than one dial on your radio station, Dawn. Yeah, there is. I listen to a lot of gospel music. I love gospel's good. I love gospel quartet music, old Southern gospel. Uh, grew up with Southern gospel music, so, and uh, you know, I like all kinds of music, but. It really bothers me when I don't understand the words of what they're saying. So that, yes. so some of that rap music, it's very fast. It's got a good beat. I might like it, but if it's can, if it's it'll one make of those, it so fast. yeah. But if it's one of those that you can't understand the words, I'm making up the words even if I can understand them. You know that song by Neil Diamond, "Forever in Blue Jeans." Uh uh You never heard it. See, you're uh -uh. too young. Okay, yeah. well, Neil Diamond, you probably don't even know who Neil Diamond is. I heard of him. Anyway, Neil Diamond had a song that was forever in blue jeans. I thought they were saying Reverend Blue Jeans. <laughs> Reverend Blue Jeans. I thought there was a hip, hip <laughs> minister out there wearing blue jeans. At the time, you know, uh, at that time, ministers didn't wear blue jeans to church. But now they're, you know, so casual. The Lord doesn't care what you wear uh, to church, just so you got, you know, your private's covered. Don't don't be like Frosty and go to church without no pants on. Because that's just, that is not politically correct. I'm just here to tell you. Porky Pig, no pants. Porky Pig didn't have pants? No. Naked little piggy. I'm telling you. Okay, now look what happened. I want you to sh just show this right now. What happened? See this seam you right here that goes. Stiletto. No, that's right. I wasn't. There's God. this seam right here. Now I had it pinned right back here. Oh, but oh, because it was on the diagonal, oh, yeah. my foot caught it. Mm -hmm. So I have to be paying attention. I can't just be talking about Porky Pig all day long. I got to be watching what I'm doing here. So now, how to? Uh, Remedy that is before I actually sew it, fold it over, I'm going to lift up my foot and with my stiletto, I'm going to lay that back down and then put my foot down. See? Is and that I, what they mean by putting your foot down? Put your foot down. I mean okay. it. Okay? And now I'm going to take my pen out before I run over it. Peter, you cannot be holding your hand on the block. The block doesn't sew. <laughs> <laughs> well, I realized that. Uh, yes. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah. Drag. Little tension on the on the block. Now see it didn't happen there because that's that seam's not on a diagonal and my pin held it in place. But because that seam was on a diagonal, it caught it funny. I just have to pay attention. And you got your blue tape installed. Well, I got my blue tape so that my hump uh, is more uh, graduated and it doesn't catch my fabric. Okay, let me sew on an ender here, and we be done with block number four. Look at it. Look at that. How Look pretty at that. that is. Isn't that pretty? 
Does it match? Well, yeah, it matches. Oh, oh that is so matches. sharp. Let's go over and give it a good press. Do you have your rawhide mallet? No, for the middle, yeah. I don't need that. Because drive, I have I have pressed all along the way. Do we drive a car over it? No, we don't. We just do a really good job of pressing open, and it'll just stay open. Oh. All right, I'm watching. Okay. Look at that steam. Ooh, you can have a facial at the same time as you're uh, ironing your blocks. I wonder if you could put essential oils in your... Iron. iron and that way it smells good, your fabric smells Ooh. good, everything smells good. And then you'd be putting oil all over your fabric, Peter. Don't oh, be giving them ideas that's like that. Idea. Don't that's do a that. bad don't be doing Wait, that. Why is that so flat? I don't know, but look let me get that my, is look, oh, let me get oh, my oh, clap on there. Clamp it. Clamp that buddy down. One, two, three. You don't have to press it that hard, Peter. I'm telling all you, right. I've done a good job pressing all, all the right. way through. All right. What? Okay, now, they're a little wonky, but you know, when that gets quilted, that'll just quilt right out. Looks but I want you to me. look. At, I want you to look at how pretty and flat that lays. Jeez, that is flat. Isn't that good? Yummy and delicious. And there's block number four. It's just like this one. So what are you doing with all those blocks? I'm going to make a quilt, I think. Okay. Okay. So you can see that block number four and block number five are the same thing. Can you see the star points? Uh-huh. It's the same block. See that? Just different colors. So for this week, uh, if you've not done one, two, or three, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, be inspired. Take your time with it. These videos will be here until... YouTube shuts me off for some kind of thing that I did wrong. I'm not quite sure, you know, because they just willy-nilly will take you off sometimes. But we're the nice channel, YouTube, so don't be taking us off, okay? Because we want to learn to quilt together. And so next week, it's going to be block, uh, we're going to show off block four and five, and then number six, and uh, we are almost halfway there. Oh, no, there's 20 blocks. So, no, we're not halfway there. Maybe a third of the way there. What do you think, a fourth? 25%. Oh, no, well, everything's cut out. It just has to be sewn together. We're 50% exactly. done. Oh, we are. We are. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. This big of a quilt. I mean, you know, it's pretty awesome. Is there anything so, you want to see picture-wise? And Do you want to do a picture challenge um, for our insiders group? Oh, I want everybody like, is there anything you that's see? in the Facebook group to be posting pictures. If you've started sewing, you can take a picture of your blocks. You can take a picture of your sewing machine. You can take a picture of your dog. You can take a picture of whatever. Well, not whatever. But you can take a picture of fun things like that and post them so we can get to know each other a little bit. What okay? about your favorite pin cushion? Yeah. I lo oh, wouldn't you love to see? Peter is so into pin cushions right now, so I'm gonna have to invite him over for dinner one night so he can see all my pin cushions and uh, and meet my puppies. So they'd be so thrilled for that. Uh, they're barkers, so they would just bark, 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 bark till he got in and started petting them, and then they'd be licking all over him. But um, anyway, till next week, we'll see you at the sewing machine. Bye.